I have the good fortune of presenting uh, the, the cheery case of, uh, of growth with, uh, with poverty uh, reduction. Um, and uh, the, the five countries that are, uh, in, uh, that are categorized uh, in this category are Ethiopia, Ghana, Malawi, Rwanda, and Uganda. Some of the, some of the countries that you would expect to see here, uh, though uh, one, uh, Malawi, uh, might be a bit controversial placed here, but we will we'll discuss it and, and see why, uh, why we have decided to do so. Um, so what I would like to do is uh, just very briefly talk about each of, these, uh, each of these countries and their experiences, and then talk about some common themes in terms of measurement and uh, in terms of the, the countries themselves. So uh, but beforehand, before doing this, let's establish uh, why these countries are in, uh, in this category. Um, so uh, what we have here are uh, the per capita GDP growth rates uh, from uh, 1998 through 2014, and we're really looking at the first decade of uh, of uh, the, the century uh, in these uh, five case studies. So uh, you can see that we've had growth rates between zero, zero and 10%, but generally uh, on average about 5% throughout uh, these, uh, these five cases. Um, and here's the corresponding poverty reduction. Uh, so we've seen some different experiences, but generally we see over the course of, uh, of the decade that is being considered uh, declines in, in poverty, whether uh, it's uh, consistent over the time or not, it, it depends on, on the country. And we've also seen different uh, regional experiences. Naturally, you see more uh, less poverty in, in rural and urban areas than in the national and, and, uh, and the rural statistics. And you also see some different uh, experiences here, uh, such as Uganda, where uh, we actually see some uh, just a leveling off of, uh, of urban poverty. In fact, some <coughs> rises in, in later years. Um, in, uh, in rural uh, areas, naturally, uh, poverty rates are, are higher uh, than in urban. Um, and uh, we generally see um, in, in, uh, uh, reduced poverty in the latter part of the decade, uh, though that's not always the case in some of the uh, countries like, uh, like Ghana. We, the poverty reduction here has, uh, was in the earlier part of, of the decade. So um, it's Hard to generalize about all of them, but we, uh, over the course of this uh, decade, we do see uh, poverty reduction that is accompanying the growth. Now, turning to Ethiopia, um, Ethiopia has been characterized by broad-based growth um, over the, the past 15 years. And the, the period that we're looking here at is uh, 2000 to 2011. Um, this growth has been reasonably steady on the aggregate, but uh, uneven in terms of, uh, of poverty reduction. Uh, in urban areas, we've seen uh, persistent uh, poverty reduction um, uh, between uh, 2000, falling from 39% to 22% to 13% um, over the five years for which we uh, have data uh, at the national level. In rural areas, uh, it stagnated uh, in the uh, first half of the decade, but then fell uh, considerably uh, in the latter half. Um, in terms of non-monetary measures, um, in, such as schooling, uh, nutrition, mortality rates, access to public goods, these are all uh, measures that are consistent with the story that we're seeing uh, in, on the monetary level, with, the mon with uh, uh, GDP growth and, and uh, monetary poverty. We see persistent welfare improvements. Now, Naturally, there are issues of data comparability, um, and you know, many will argue um, about the comparability of the, of the household survey data, uh, and uh, we've tried to address that by uh, estimating uh, different poverty lines um, and different uh, deflation rates uh, for, uh, for our consumption aggregates. Um, and those poverty numbers are not the official poverty numbers. These are those that, that we estimated using a utility consistent approach that uh, Channing Arndt and Ken Simler have uh, had developed. Um, but the body of the evidence here, the monetary and the non-monetary evidence, uh, paints a picture of substantive welfare improvements. Um, so what's been going on in Ethiopia? Uh, you can, the economic landscape has been changing uh, markedly. Um, the, um, through an agricultural-led industrialization strategy, the government has really targeted the agricultural sector. Um, and uh, it consequently, or we also see uh, increased agricultural production and commercialization of this agriculture. Um, 
part of the, the strategy of the government has been to uh, develop the infrastructure and through massive investments in, uh, in roads, hydroelectric dams, and telecommunications. And um, at the same as a consequence of this, uh, we're finding that uh, markets are functioning better. So we see uh, wholesale markets, for example, for, uh, for food markets, cereal markets are better integrated. Mar uh, marketing margins are, uh, are much smaller. There's more competition in them. Um, Part of the, uh, the um, ADLI, uh, the agricultural-led industrialization strategy, has also been to improve uh, uh, agricultural productivity, and efforts have been made through, uh, through agricultural extension programs, um, and to the extent that uh, there are some 45,000 uh, uh, 45, extension agents um, in, Madag in East, sorry, Ethiopia today, um, and uh, this is the largest uh, number of extension agents per person uh, throughout Africa. Um, it's arguable that, um, that the, the agricultural production growth has been through uh, extensification, but there's uh, indicators that uh, some growth might be uh, following through intensification uh, if, if this pays off. Now, in response to chronic food insecurity uh, in rural areas, uh, the donors, along with the Ethiopian government, have uh, developed an uh, extensive uh, social welfare program, the Productive uh, Safety Nets program. Uh, and this is designed to prevent asset depletion at, at times of shocks. Um, and uh, thus far, the evaluations are coming out quite positive on uh, the impact of this, uh, the targeting as well as the, uh, the impact. Um, there remain challenges, of course. Um, Given its uh, dependence on primary commodities and rain-fed agriculture, uh, it, Ethiopia is vulnerable to exogenous shocks. Uh, agricultural productivity remains low, uh, and uh, manufacturing growth remains low, and inhibited largely by access to credit and, and power. Um, Macroeconomic, uh, macroeconomic policy management is also a, a challenge for uh, Ethiopia. Uh, it, there have been uh, high bouts of inflation uh, over the past decade, um, and uh, so uh, there uh, remain challenges. Um, Ghana, now turning to Ghana, uh, the, Ghana has experienced consistent growth over the past 30 years. Uh, it uh, has rapid growth in the services sector, though uh, moderate uh, or modest uh, agricultural growth. Uh, it's had observed uh, uh, progress in terms of monetary poverty. Uh, in, in urban sectors, the poverty fell uh, between 1998 and 2005 by some uh, nine percentage points, but then leveled off in the latter part of the decade. Uh, similarly, in rural areas, you saw um, some rapid uh, decline in, uh, in poverty um, and uh, then leveling off in the latter part of the decade as well. Um, there have also been progress in non-monetary uh, measures of poverty in, uh, in line with the, the monetary uh, measures. I'm going through this pretty quickly, uh, given that I have five cases to, to uh, go over with you. Um, a key feature of, uh, of uh, Ghana, as well as the other countries uh, in, uh, in this grouping, is political stability. And, and indeed, uh, uh, Ghana has had two peaceful uh, transitions of, of government uh, in, in, during this period as well. Uh, challenges remained. Um, there are struggles with effective mo uh, macroeconomic and fiscal uh, policy management, uh, as evidenced by uh, the recent IMF loan. Uh, the manufacturing sector growth uh, and private investment uh, remained slow. Uh, and uh, as a consequence, the economic transformation is, uh, is slow as well. Um, Monetary policy or monetary poverty, excuse me, uh, has been slow to respond to, to growth, and this may be uh, a consequence of rising inequality um, as, as well as high poverty uh, in, in agriculture. Uh, oil production, uh, this could uh, be a positive uh, for Ghana, but uh, you know, emphasizing that this could also be a challenge, uh, that it requires prudent management of the, of the resources. Turning to Malawi. Um, Malawi has uh, experienced rapid broad-based growth uh, in the latter half of, uh, of the decade, um, some 7% uh, uh, during this time period. And uh, this growth has been experienced in various different sectors, uh, but uh, arguably agriculture is the most important of these, uh, experiencing some 10% growth uh, and making up some 30% uh, value added. Um, this, uh, Many will uh, argue that this is attributable to uh, this agricultural growth is attributable to the farm input subsidy program, a, a massive uh, investment in, uh, in uh, increasing productivity. Um, and uh, given the, 
the growth in agricultural uh, production and, and overall growth in, in the economy, there are expectations that growth would be pro-poor. Uh, the official poverty estimates, however, do, do not support this. Uh, indeed, they find that national poverty fell marginally and rural poverty uh, rose. Um, Were these uh, annual growth rates? Or was growth those are an, annual growth annual. rates, yes. Um, and uh, the issue, however, the, the authors of, uh, of this case take issue with uh, the use of a single national poverty line and not adjusting for uh, differences in regional uh, relative prices in the various regions. Um, and um, so and, uh, but the idea that the uh, relative prices uh, the, might not, or the official CPI might not affect the, the differences in relative prices uh, across the regions, nor appropriately um, address the, uh, the, or be representative of inflation for the poor. Um, and so using this utility consistent approach that I mentioned for Ethiopia as well, uh, they calculate uh, regional poverty lines for, for these two uh, survey years and find that indeed national poverty fell, um, uh, not uh, marginally, but uh, substantially, um, and that rural poverty did not rise, but also fell uh, substantially. And urban poverty uh, fell as well. Um, now, uh, why are we concerned that uh, uh, placing Malawi in, uh, in this, uh, this category of, uh, of uh, relative uh, growth and, and corresponding poverty reduction is? Well, sure, there have been the revised poverty estimates uh, indicate that poverty reduction is consistent with income growth and, and improved non-monetary welfare measures. Uh, but um, the short spell that we have, uh, that we're observing this five-year time period uh, is uh, largely driven by increases in agricultural production. Um, and the durability of this trend is really open to question, especially if it's dependent on a, uh, a national uh, input subsidy uh, program. Turning to Rwanda, uh, Rwanda has, has sustained growth uh, since the post-conflict uh, period, um, approximately 4% per year. Poverty reduction uh, has, has also accompanied this growth. Between 2000 and 2005, there was, uh, two, it fell by 2.2 percentage points, uh, in the latter half of the decade by nearly 12 percentage points. Uh, it, uh, Rwanda also uh, is characterized by high inequality, one of the, high, one of the highest uh, genies in the region, um, and uh, in, experienced some a rise in inequality in the first part of the, uh, of the decade, and then a fall uh, in inequality, uh, though, though at reasonably small uh, magnitudes, uh, which may help to explain some of the, the differences in the poverty reduction. Non-monetary poverty, uh, non-monetary welfare also uh, observed uh, uh, improvements across the board. So why so successful in Rwanda could just be post-conflict catch-up. Uh, that's uh, entirely possible. Uh, the massive aid inflows that followed uh, the conflict as well. Uh, but it could also be due uh, to, the, uh, to what uh, Booth and uh, Goluba Mutebi describe as the developmental author authoritarian state, uh, which um, has uh, increased the budget uh, allocations towards health, uh, education, and agriculture. Um, and has promoted uh, private sector development and has quite ingeniously set, uh, arranged, um, established a set of arrangements for managing economic rents so that they don't get um, out of hand or destructive. Uh, but given lack of evaluation, it's, uh, this is uh, speculation uh, at this point as what the key contributors are. Uh, challenges remain as well. Um, while we find that the, the objective monetary and non-monetary uh, measures uh, find that uh, there, there have been improvements, uh, there have been more pessimistic findings at the uh, qualitative field work uh, in, at the local level, where people just tend not to feel better off. Uh, this may be due to, uh, to positioning in uh, the relative improvements, uh, but there's also a uh, lack of progress in, uh, in voice and accountability. Uh, so people just aren't feeling as, uh, as empowered. Uh, high inequality remains a challenge, uh, not just within regions, but uh, between Kigali and the rest of the country. Now, turning to Uganda, um, since 1986, uh, Uganda has experienced uh, impressive growth of approximately uh, just under 7% per year uh, in real GDP. Um, Official poverty estimates have, uh, have also shown uh, impressive declines in poverty, 
uh, from 57% um, in the early 90s to uh, roughly 20% in, uh, in 2012. Um, and uh, these, many attribute this to uh, far-reaching economic reforms. Um, but um, there's a question of how is, um, uh, is this, uh, this growth uh, shared, given the spatial heterogeneity of the experiences uh, in Uganda. Um, now, the uh, question of degrees of, of, of progress, if you will. So when looking at asset and non-monetary uh, measures, it's, uh, the progress is not quite as, uh, as impressive as, uh, as the uh, poverty and real GDP numbers suggest. Um, alternate estimates of, uh, of poverty based on assets in the DHS using small area um, estimation methods um, by uh, Daniels and Mino uh, find that indeed there has been poverty reduction, uh, but uh, has, been, uh, has been slower uh, than the official poverty estimates suggest. Um, in, uh, in this case study, uh, the authors also use a utility consistent approach uh, to uh, estimating poverty lines. And they find as well that uh, there are higher levels of poverty uh, than the official poverty estimates, but that, uh, and that the, uh, the, uh, there have been reductions, but uh, at a more moderated pace than, uh, than the official levels. Uh, other, uh, and we, they also find a, a rising uh, urban poverty rate after 2010. And some would attribute, so this, we saw this earlier in the figures, uh, the slowdown in poverty reduction, both in the urban and rural areas, but in the uh, rural areas, um, attributed to uh, a tepid performance in, in agriculture. Uh, now, to get to some common themes, the first in terms of, of measurement, uh, all of uh, these, these cases have uh, data issues. Uh, that is uh, the quite uh, unexpected. We always have uh, issues of uh, data issues, but we work uh, carefully to, uh, to uh, triangulate the, our results to not just look at monetary pover poverty uh, and, uh, and growth, but also non-monetary measures. Um, and you know, data issues in terms of comparability or rebasing of the GDP in, in Ghana are issues um, such as those. Now, uh, another point is that monetary poverty uh, is quite volatile, it really depends on when the survey uh, was conducted, uh, given that it's not conduct they're not conducted every year. For example, in Ethiopia, using the rural Ethiopian Rural Household Survey, um, if uh, you look, estimate the poverty rates uh, of the 1,500 households in this survey, uh, it fell from 55% to uh, 35% between 1995 and 2004. But then uh, when we estimate them again uh, in 2009, it bounces up to 52%. Now, is that a trend? Likely not, given uh, the uh, spike in, in food prices at this time, as well as the drought that was, uh, a, that was experienced there. Um, and so, uh, again, this gives us a, a, a motivation for uh, multidimensional assessment of, uh, of poverty, uh, to, just to get a, a broader picture of this. And uh, given that uh, multidimensional or, or non-monetary measures are more easily measured and more stable. Um, so then getting to each of these countries, this is my last slide, I promise, Arnie, um, then uh, that each of these countries is characterized by peace and stability, right? Uh, the, uh, especially the post-conflict economies. Um, this is a, a precondition uh, for uh, the growth that we observe. But threats remain, right? Um, it's, uh, there's no certainty that, that, uh, that there might be unrest in, in any of these countries that, uh, that we're looking at. But the governments are doing a better job of uh, providing peace and security uh, in these countries. Uh, the role of agriculture uh, is especially important in all of these countries uh, that, uh, where we've seen um, uh, progress uh, as an initial driver of, of, of poverty and, so, and indicates that there are potential returns to effective policies, right? So we look at Ethiopia and Malawi where we've seen these impressive uh, increases in agricultural production in, in the latter years, uh, whereas in Uganda, while there has been poverty reduction, you haven't seen quite as, as, uh, as much given the tepid uh, uh, agricultural production there. So in short, there have been successes so far, but challenges remain uh, and happy to talk more about those. Thank you. Thank you.